my personal one is X is Sundown, but you can also follow me on, um, I'm going to put them all in here. There's a whole bunch of places you can follow me. Uh, <laughs> got me on uh, Texas Sundown at finerworks.com, which is one of the places I'm going to be referring to, and Geo Galleries, which is where another uh, thing I'll be talking about tonight. So I'll put you all those. I'll do a little bit of while we're waiting on Jim. Actually, I've known Jim um, a long time. Uh, 95, I used to work at One Hour Pro Photo uh, right there on Babcock and 410. And we had a second location on an uh, Ingram Road right near 410. And uh, I used to actually, uh, we used to have an E6 machine for uh, slide film. And then we developed, you know, 35 mil millimeter through the, the machines and we did hand processing as well so we used to use the old dark room um and uh jim used to come in to get prints uh made for i think i believe at that time it was like some school sittings um and that's how i met jim so that's been a, a long time and then full circle i came to finer works about almost five years ago and I uh, can't believe it's been almost five years and uh, Jim prints with Final Works and uh, some uh, just you know great that I get to work with him again so really like that um, kind of a, that's what I love about San Antonio our communities are kind of small like that you know they uh, we're a big city but we have these really great little communities all uh, within San Antonio let me see, we have, okay, there's Kevin's us right there. Let me grab your Instagram, Kevin. Yeah, and if you guys are selling your photography anymore, if you have an Etsy page, um, anything like that, let me post that up there as well. So, you know, photography, I, I really liked darkroom photography. I think I still like darkroom photography, even over digital, but I like some things that uh, in digital that I don't have to uh, kind of have mild anxiety attacks over. I used to love solarizing negatives um, when I was younger. I just liked the effect and um, you had to do that just right or you lost your whole roll of film. Um, so... Uh, I'm I'm really excited that you're able to do a lot of those kind of effects now with Photoshop. <laughs> Let's see, got Dro. He's got here. He's got his Zenfolio. Put that over there. Okay. Like um, the one of the things like I said tonight, I'm going to kind of be going over just kind of ways to have photography um, be as a passive income. That's great because I mean, you know, a lot of you work really hard day in day out. Whether you're doing um, wedding photography, event photography, it's your nine to five job. Uh, maybe some of you have done photojournalism. Um, I've done a little of all of that too. So there's the the photography sometimes that I say that pays the bills um, and then there's photography that you enjoy doing as well um, maybe that doesn't sell as much but there's ways to even use those uh, images to have some kind of passive income um, and that means that they're up there so we're going to talk about you know using print on demand uh, for some of your images so that you're not having it's it's basically making money while you sleep for your images. So that's what's great about print on demand. Some of the products that you can offer up um, and using kind of platforms like you know, not, not only Etsy and Shopify, I'll talk a little bit about geo galleries um, and using order fulfillment 
through a company like the one I work for, uh, Final Works. And again, I'll, I'll show y'all some of the products that we offer there that y'all can use for some of these um, sites like Etsy or Geo Galleries along those lines. Also kind of like a brainstorm of ideas uh, just to make money. I mean, uh, I think the, the most I've ever did was in college. I would find so many different ways to make money with photography. I just, I loved photography. It was all I wanted to do in, in high school and college. And I kept doing that for the longest time. Um, even, you know, like I said, with the nine, then my nine to five would change. And I went into television uh, research marketing for about 12 years and uh, photography kind of sat on the back burner, but it, I still did my fun stuff with it and try to wrap my head around digital photography. So a lot of little side hustles with photography that you can kind of have up there uh, just to have some kinds of streams of income coming in. So we're gonna go over some of that. Um, neat products, let me look on here too. Yeah, and just some, like I said, some brain uh, storming of that and how to maybe upsell some of your images. So we'll go over that. I think we're just still waiting here on, on Jim. I would love to give you an awesome intro, but Jim <laughs> has that all in his head. So whenever you really want to start, okay, you're welcome well, to start. If you want to just open up questions now or just wait till later, yeah. this is your this is your show. <laughs> well, uh, if you guys have questions, you know, just chime in. Um, if you're somebody who really hates being on audio or video, you can also use a chat and I'll watch that as well. Um, okay, so I'm Melissa Hernandez. Um, currently, I work doing social media over here at this company, Finer Works. Some of y'all may have used us and some of y'all may be clients here that uh, get prints done with us. Um, we are a order fulfillment uh, photo lab and fine art printer here in San Antonio. And we are located on, um, off of Perrin uh near, kind of near where's Buck Parkway on a street called Y. Um, I've been working here for about five years. And as I was mentioning earlier, uh, I, I knew Jim from 1995 working at a, at a one hour uh, processing, uh, processing photo lab. So uh, known him a long time. Um, and Jim's kind of watched me do, I guess, a bunch of little side hustles <laughs> on the side of just using my photography um, to make some money. And um, I, I, with Finer Works, we also have another website called Geo Galleries, and it helps artists and photographers sell their prints as ready to hang wall art. So I'm gonna show you some of that and just kind of a passive income. And passive income is basically, you know, something that you don't have to work as hard at. You've, you've done the hard work of getting the photography done. You've gotten your image prepared. Um, there's a lot of little sites that you can either sell your photos to be used on through like license agreement. But with geo galleries, you kind of get to set the pace. So I'm going to show you guys uh, that on here. Let me see if what I have a way of access here. Okay. And Robert, I don't know if you want to make me host uh, just so I can share my screen. I would love to. I'm not sure how to. <laughs> Go to participants. Okay. And then hover over me and there should be more. And on the drop down and more, you should see make host. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. There we go. Let me just share my screen here. So this is Geo Galleries. Um, it is part of Finer Works. Uh, so you have a Finer Works account. You don't create a Geo Galleries account. A Geo Galleries account would be a buyer's account. Um, and you would make your own. So let's take a look at this one, um, Wandering Drones. He does drone photography. We'll go first to 
his page. So right here, he's um, got his logo and said it's better when you put your photo there. Link to his website, a brief bio, and he's got about 30 images um, in his Wandering Drones gallery. I'm sorry. Okay, if you have a question, just let, just chime on in. Um, so he has his photography up here and he's able to offer, if you look on the right hand side, several versions of this. He's got fine art paper prints using the Hamel Torshan. And he's selling those at $20 for an eight by 10. Uh, I believe that might be about a $10 print. So he's marked it up like to $20. So he gets to keep um, $10 um, on that on his markup, if I, I've just got to make sure. So if your print is $10, you can mark it up anywhere from half the time of cost to three times the cost. So if the print is $10, um, you can mark it up all the way up to $30. Uh, so he's got some classic, uh, the photo satin right here and a framed print that's a 12 by 18. And some uh, HD metal prints and canvas prints. And what's great about Geo Galleries, um, the way it works, like I said, you gotta sign up for a, uh, a Final Works account first. And you go on here and you load your inventory images uh, to have it on there. Let me get out of this one and get into a different account so I can show y'all. Uh, let me go into, I'll go into an, an artist account though, but uh, you can see how the images are uploaded. You're able to make what we call virtual inventory. So you have your inventory files and temporary files. Temporary files on Final Works go away after a year, but your inventory files stay there. Um, so from the inventory files, an artist or photographer will go ahead and create virtual inventory or products. And you would see this on their page just as we did there. And on the geo gallery side right here on the right, and I'll increase that screen size a little bit, you would see your selling price at 40. And like I said, the cost of the print. The space that you're in either freezer for your muffins. Okay. And uh, let's see. Okay. Um, okay. The selling price uh, for this frame, for instance, is $242. The print cost is $30. So they're able to basically kind of upsell on their print here, add some framing, it's ready to go. Um, and then the artist gets um, their royalty that you see here, $73. And what Final Works has done is also given them a commission for selling the frames on here. So they get the $13.90 in addition to that. And it's 10% of the frame cost, which you see is $139. So it's a great way to have this. You go ahead and you put this work in your, you get your photos up on there and you create your inventory. And it's kind of once that site is up and you're able to do that, you're able to put that on your social media, have um, your, like I said, there's a lot of people who haven't been able to invest in a website. And your website does take, you know, a considerable amount of time and money um, to generate income. So, with geo galleries being there, we've had a lot of people, especially during the pandemic, utilize it on their social media, having it there in their um, in their uh, links on their bios, on their Instagram profiles, and have people buy prints for them. You know, so this is in place of some of the of uh, art fairs and stuff that went away. So this is a great way if you're already selling um, on social media, or if you've been doing all of this. I hear. Um, during the pandemic is selling online because uh, honestly, during the pandemic uh, for Final Works, um, our sales uh, increased during this time. A lot more people really saw the benefit of making prints of their work and selling it. And this is, this is what would work for photographers. It's a passive income. And some people, you can use other things like Etsy, uh, Shopify, and if that is the case, you can go into fulfillment and finer works. And we actually have a few ways to go ahead and import those orders. 
So Final Works is basically your order fulfillment. They will print your stuff out. Um, if you're on Geo Galleries, it would go with Geo Galleries branding. But if you have your own logo and store um, on Etsy or Shopify or on a website, uh, you could brand your stuff on, on there. The labels, the shipping labels, everything will look like it came from you. And Finer Works sends out those prints. Um, that, vir like having virtual inventory where it saves you money is that you're not having to buy all of these and stock them at home, uh, worry about damage. They just go out like a fresh print. And that's the great um, part of having an order fulfillment company taking care of your stuff and getting your prints out for you. And having something on the background like Etsy or Shopify, Geo Galleries, again, that's that passive income. You've put the work in to make the, the inventory and it's there to generate some money for you. Now, I will tell you, no matter what site you are on, um, you cannot just leave it to the site's traffic. Etsy, uh, of all of the sites, I think does the best job at generating traffic to people to have your stuff seen. But you have to put in some of the work. You do have to do some of, you know, some social posts, some Facebook, let people know where you are. And the people that have I've already been buying prints of your stuff who have already commented on your photography, those are your warm sales leads. They're gonna buy prints because they already enjoy um, what you have of what you've already uh, shown them. So selling them a print is, is going to be, is going to be, you know, a, an easier sell than just kind of tuning your horn out to nobody that's not unfamiliar with you. So I totally recommend finding um, one of these like geo galleries or Etsy that and have, you know, Finer Works kind of do this. And the great thing about Finer Works being local you can come to the Finer Work shop and see, we can give you a sample pack of paper. This will let you kind of touch and feel and see what you would like to have your work um, on. Uh, that way you know what it is that your, your customers or collectors are gonna be getting. Some of the products I suggest. Now prints, I'm gonna tell you that's where you make the most money um, is gonna be your prints because you can really upsell those. But, um, on finer works, we do have what I call specialty items. And these are also good. And you can, the more unique your items can be, the better you can format uh, the image sometimes on there is going to sell. So you have your things like our cards, um, posters, but we also have our stuff like ceramic tiles. Um, I know in Austin, and I'll see them here at Brick Marketplace, there's a lot of photographers that format their photos into a one by one and they sell a lot of the ceramic tiles uh, kind of as coasters. Um, few, uh, a few photographers have actually used multiple tiles to make like a mosaic uh, to either be a backsplash, they sell those. Um, so that is um, an option of, of some of these uh, specialty items you can have, pillows, um, Personally, I have liked and I've actually, with my family, have done like maybe memory pillows, um, and which is like a photo collage, and have sold these little soft 14-inch uh, soft throw pillows. And um, they're great. Where now, these, when you're doing uh, some of these specialty products, where you're going to make the most money in is kind of actually having a physical inventory stockpile. So if you're doing pop-ups or you're doing, um, I want to say like any like retail, if you're going to do a wholesale, you might be able to go ahead and look at the bulk rates on, on these products and be able to order, like let's say you're able to order 20 right here. Uh, that's going to save you about $4 right there on the cost. So you're able to kind of work a wholesale rate with uh, retailers. And if you're doing something along the lines of um, where all these specialty products also work really well with, are people who do, uh, I wanna say like the tourist photography, if you find tourist um, interest spots here locally, wherever you're from, from San Antonio, you know, you can go do these and then contact shops. Um, like I said, within Blue Star, there's several shops, Mockingbird, Handprints for one. 
um, we get a lot of tourists there and they want to take home something uh, that is branded of the city they are. And when you can come up with products like uh, pillows and mugs and stuff, and like I said, add your twist to it. The great thing with photography now being so digital is you're able to add your another artistic element in it in Photoshop. Um, back in the day when Photoshop probably first came out, um, what I actually would do uh, just to make extra money, I used to be like a bartender in college and I would work down on the river. Uh, I would go take, before my shift would start, I would go take photos during the lunch crowd at um, just tourists eating uh, while they were eating or having the backdrop of the river walk. I'd get their email, I'd send them the image, and then I would go ahead and tell them I'd print it and I'd have like a little um, like logo of a heart with the Alamo in it and put the date. And then I would print them up and they could go ahead and order mugs, pillows and everything and they would pay me for that. Um, so specialty items for me back then worked really well, not only on the prints, but um, I was able to get a lot of specialty items on there. And it was, and then, like I said, specialty items, even with the markup on it, you don't make much, you won't make a big, uh, a big profit as you would from a print, but they are nice to have out there. They do sell pretty well, especially, like I said, depending on what you're going to pair it up with, um, whether it be like a, a photograph of the people uh, that you're selling directly to or, again, tourist uh, interest spots. These sometimes do really, really well. And, uh, and those you can have up uh, if you do the uh, tourist spots, you could kind of do something a little more passive income. That could be up on your geo galleries, your Etsy. Um, we have a lot of photographers on geo gallery that do... Uh, like travel photography. Let me see if I can pull up a few sites, um, a few pages. And I know there's even just kind of the pictures that they've taken on their uh, vacations. Um, Jim has that Colorado trip that he does every year. So you get able to get beautiful sites, bring them back home. <laughs> and sell them, put them up on your geo galleries. Uh, let me see, there is, let me show you this couple here. The Bex, um, they actually, let me see if I can get that all the way at the top. Let me come up here. I have, um, a couple that actually take people out on excursions for fly fishing. And so they take pictures of um, all of the different locations that they're able to take people to. There we are. This is one of their photos here. Um, so they have some of the wild <sighs> photography that they do. Uh, get that. But uh, from their fly fishing excursions that they do, they're getting paid one to take people out on there. But the pictures in, uh, that they capture are just so beautiful. I, I have loved their vacation photos that they put up here. And then they also have, um, they don't have pictures uh, obviously here of the uh, clients that they take out, but that's another side income there is going ahead and uh, taking photos of the clients that they take fly fishing because everybody wants to remember that. I mean, it's it's one thing when you buy a photo of a man in a silhouette fly fishing. It's another thing when you're actually able to put your face in there and you're in this really scenic background. Um, if you're somebody who is who does excursions um, or is an excursion tour uh, tour guide, this is that's another way to do it. One, you know your city and you know how to frame the photo. Um, I, I don't know how many of y'all have done this. I found like several people when I went to Japan um, who were like an excursion tour guide and they took great photos of us out at different spots. And again, you know, for her to send me the digital files or to print stuff there, she had a, a really great little printer there in Japan that put them on. Um, it was like so, uh, some wood pieces there uh, with a Japanese motif on it. And it was so pretty, but something unique like that, 
I mean, I really didn't care. I was going to buy it. It's unique to my experience. So if you can do something along that route too, um, especially right now it's summer, right? This week's spring break. If y'all wanted to go offer excursions where you take people out to go see stuff like this um, and you photograph them basically um, out there too. I mean, you're almost like their vacation photographer. I, I think the prints that you could sell, especially if you can find unique ways to uh, present them for them, to have as a keepsake from their, their adventure will be great. So like I said, if you can do something like this on vacation, if you, especially when you're lucky enough to go to beautiful spots like Africa or Japan or Peru and, and get some of these images that not everybody gets to see is great. And the other people you appeal to are the people who have been there because they're not able to take as good of a photo as you are. And making these available is great. I, I like, I buy a lot of street photography from Japan. I, I was glad to be there, but I could not capture everything as well as I would have liked to. It was also there in right after the cherry blossom season. So I didn't get to capture the cherry blossoms. Um, so buying photos of places I was, I was at and, and being able to show like a photo I have against like a photo that's of the cherry blossoms in bloom. Um, it's something I like having here in my home. It's it's art on my walls. Um, and, and like you said, there's photography that a lot of us have collected over the years. I have, uh, I think in high school, Enzel Adams was like one of my favorite photographers, Annie Leibovitz as well. Um, I have several photos that have been around in frames since 94. Uh, and I, I love that. And framing them up with your name, your photographer name, the area it is, that's a great way to do it. Take some of your uh, phot photos and make posters of them and put your name on there to brand yourself. Make people a collector of your photography. And that's one way to do that is branding your name somewhere on there. It doesn't always have to be, you know, big and, and right in their face, um, but something that lets people know it's your photo. Um, that's a, a great tie to have there. And it's again, a, a something that's gonna work on some of the specialty items that we print. Let me go here and just make sure I'm covering everything I wanna cover. Um, the other thing you can do and having finer works here, and we've had, it's kind of like uh, the frame. We actually have kind of like we used to call it a DIY framing. Um, you can go ahead and tell people, look, I can frame up that photo that I just sold you. If you like it, let me go on and I can bring you, you can order your own corner samples through Finer Works. You can be your own framer. What we have learned at Finer Works is molding companies cannot sell those molding sticks unless you have a storefront. But through Finer Works, you can go ahead and order molding, make up your own framing. You get the kit, you drop it in. If you print it through us, you would actually just have us do it. You would say, I'm going to order this print as a 16 by 20. I'm going to have it framed up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and order a frame. And we'll say right here, say like a 16 by 20. I just want to get a price on here for you guys to look at and think about. Again, just upselling your photos. I'm going to get into move my zoom. And actually, I got to make this just a little bit bigger. So when it, yeah. Let's put this in at 16, 20. Give it a mat and then you can go ahead and get some acrylic. Uh, me, I love conservation reflection control. 
glazing. One, it makes a better presentation in there because you don't get as much glare and it preserves your photo in there. So that's something people like to have is that they know it's going to be a legacy piece, but you can go ahead and frame this. And right now you see it, it's at 227 right here. So that's your cost, right? And then what you can do, and if you can go to uh, any frame place and you can go ahead and, and you probably can mark this up about two times and still be under what other framing companies are doing or uh, custom framers, even if you went to like any of the commercial stores. Um, and that's a way to go ahead and make a little extra money with your photography. You already have a great photo going ahead and framing up something and and being able to say, especially if you have a, a custom size, maybe it's not 16 by 20, maybe you're doing something a little longer, maybe 16 by 22 for whatever reason, it's not your traditional frame size. You can get it custom framing done for them here, have it all put together and bump up that price um, to go ahead and offer them the custom frame photo you charge for the photo, you charge for the framing. And that's a great way. And this, and you're not going to have to build this frame, especially if you end up getting it print, if you buy the print and do the frame at the same time. You can go ahead and, and charge for this framing as if you did it yourself. And and all you'll do is maybe drop in the photo for them if you end up uh, ordering the, the print and the frame separate. But little things like that, stuff that complement um your your photos is a great um a great kind of little secondary income for you guys to have um we have a new product that's going to be coming out at uh finer works and actually i have james also on our thing who's the owner there at finer works uh my boss and <laughs> so we were talking about um a great product that we're going to have coming out and that i was telling him um this is something in the framing world, I get a lot. A lot of people want what they call sandwiching their uh, photos to make a float effect of but by uh, with glass. And uh, let me see. I think I have a question coming up here. Oh, there's James. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you, James. Um, I've got my. Let me get this downloaded really quick. Put this on my desktop so I can show this to you. Um, and I let me pop that in. It's downloading. I may have to upload it here. Let me actually have a folder of uh, my drive of, of images. So let me upload it in here too, because I think I like James' sample image much better. Let me add it in here. Downloads, example. I think if you just click on it, it should just open up so people- It just see. open up in Zoom for them to see? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it'll open up on your screen. All right, let me see. Sure Can y'all see that cool. example? Huh? Can you see it right now? Are y'all able to see this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, and it's a, uh, let me see if it'll let me share this here for you guys to see. Do you see it now? There we go. So, um, James, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Um, this was so, so this is a new product that's kind of unique, and I think it's a nice way for people to display their photos. And uh, I think many people have heard of the these uh float frames and not, not to get them confused with uh, canvas floater frames, but where the photo kind of floats in the frame and, and your wall actually acts as the, uh, as the matting uh, in some respects so that the, uh, uh, you know, it, it, your, your, the room you display, it actually accents the work. Um, so uh, came up with this product, our framing department, uh, was real good at putting this together uh, real quick. And uh, I was able to actually get a the live example. Now, Melissa has, uh, so let's see if you can see it with so kind of reflecting my, my screen here. 
Mm-hmm. But this is the, yeah, the, the main- example uh, of what you what you see there. Um, and so, in most cases, if you go to Michael's Hobby Lobby and you buy one of these frames, these float photo frames, and you're going to put the image between two panes of glass. And uh, one of the things we've seen with that is we have some that find works that we, we um, the group of yeah. and the photos just kind of over time they kind of slide down and they, they just don't stay set there. So we did something different. We have the the capabilities to print directly onto panes of glass or in this case acrylic glass. Uh, this is our premium uh, clear acrylic glass that we use uh, with frames, and we actually printed it directly onto it. And now, if 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 uh, if any of y'all know something about printing, with printing, generally, uh, like with your inkjet printers at home, or if you uh, you know print a Kodak and Dura print, uh, you don't print white. Your white is the paper itself. Uh, so. So there's a challenge when printing directly to acrylic, uh, and that is if, is any white just passes right through. Now, to prevent that, our printer is actually able to print white. So behind the image, it prints a layer of white as well. So it's printed and permanently stuck there directly onto the, um, to the, to the acrylic glass. And uh, it's, it's a really nice uh, nice way to display your photos, I, I believe. Um, we're planning on offering a bunch of uh, different sizes. Well, we're, we're gonna start off with a, a handful of sizes, but uh, we'll expand that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's relatively inexpensive to produce because uh, we're gonna try to stick with uh, our most affordable frames at least initially and you know there's almost no cost to the print itself you know the cost is just the frame and the and the and the glazing and so yeah so you can actually you know hang this on the wall right it's ready to hang ready to be displayed and so we're excited about this and we'll be offering this at finer works um now i know some people will ask well what about the print quality it's you really can't you see. Can't see there. let me see if i can do it here it, it real well, but uh, it it's not going to you know because you're printing on on glass, it's not going to have the same resolution or uh, definition that maybe a, a a photo print you know on on Kodak paper would. But you know just for you know hanging on the wall, if, if you know most people won't, aren't going to even notice you know that fact. So. Uh, Generally, I mean, it just, it, it looks fantastic when you see it live. And Melissa, I think you have some other photos. Uh, yeah. Um, that you took so earlier is, today. Yeah, those are just a few we, we took today. Um, and let me see, I have, have some that are a little more detailed in there. Yeah, you can kind of see. See, those see here you can see, yeah. How so it yeah, gets. so it's, it's, it's uh, again. It's it's printed directly onto the glazing, mm-hmm. versus uh, you know just sticking yeah. a print. Yeah. You know, a print, and it's it's not between two pieces of glazing, so you know you don't. And, Which makes it much more lightweight. Um, yeah. And so again, something like this being a unique framing option, and you're offering your photos on this. This gives you that little edge on selling stuff, for finding and being the first to hear about some of these things and offering them um, it is a great way to upsell your, your photography. Let me show you two. So there you can see how the white uh, is in their back. And then uh, we have a spacer that kind of goes in there to hold the glazing into place to the frame. Yeah. Yeah, and so- Everybody in the office actually loved this. Everybody was asking James how to go ahead and start ordering today to make their own prints. So, so um, yeah, we, we hope to have that on Finer Works available for people probably within like the next Monday you know, or so. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's my goal. My goal was yeah. initially tomorrow, but then Melissa, well, I said Friday. Melissa said, well, that's tomorrow. I said, okay, well, Monday. <laughs> 
he's ambitious. But um, like I said, there's things that Finer Works offers that are, um, they're just great, you know, selling tools because you're able to offer such a unique presentation of your fo uh, your photo. And again, upsell that, you know, um, and, and make some in extra income from those. Uh, another thing, um, what I've seen several people do, uh, if y'all have gone to First Friday here in San Antonio during the art walk on South Alamo there, the brick and stuff like that. Um, and I told this kid to go, I, I, I loved what he was doing because he was, you know, just hustling it. That's um, what he did. He had, he had shown um, photographs of what he had on his Instagram and they were just really pretty um, vignette looking photos of uh, kind of candids at events like First Friday. And he was, you know, just selling digital prints. Um, what you can also do, again, because getting a physical print, let me see if I can have to turn off probably my, my uh, background. So I'm here at home. So I'll just turn this off. Uh, let's see. Choose my virtual background. Let me just turn this off so y'all can see this a little better. Okay. It's a presentation mat to put the photos in. So you just go to um, events and take some really good photos. Cause trust me, everybody cannot take a good photo. Um, in this case, this is me and some friends at our art gallery in Austin with our artists. But this is what's nice. Uh, we have these things called presentation mats um, at FidaWorks. And I'll open it up so you guys can kind of see in there. So the photo is taped in with um, it's kind of this archival tape on here, so it's great, no acid to kind of touch your images. Um, I used a satin luster paper, which, you know, has that photo feel to it, and have it in a mat board like that. And um, um, and this one, you can tell, is from a phone photo. So it has a weird, you know, dimension to it. So uh, I was able to order that because we can custom cut those out. So your photos, again, you can make um, if I, I don't know how many of y'all like to do this, but I love to create collage backgrounds, borders and stuff like that, that are unique to an event or to a location. Um, I, I don't know how many of y'all have done, I used to work in theme park photos. We used to offer, you know, basically where you're on the ride and it has some of the graphics that are part of the ride um, photo. And that kind of gets collaged together and you buy these photo packs when you get off the ride. Somewhat along the same thing. So if you want to make a collage background or mat or uh, to go with your photo and sell those from events that you attend, Fiesta, anything like that, they, you can make a QR code to your website to go, or you can get a MailChimp and collect one so you can start collecting emails and email people their photos. You can either do it by really quick jotting a number on a piece of paper and take it in front of your frame before, or in front of your photo before you shoot the group. And then you send them that image and you know what images go to what family and email and you send it to them. And then you send them a, basically a print pack. Um, you can tell them, would you like to buy for, you know, you know, hundred bucks, you can get like, you know, several, a five by seven, uh, your image on a mug, anything like that, that float frame you saw, you can probably go ahead and come up your pricing, and make a, a higher tier. Anything that you can do to make a, I want to say like a keepsake moment, uh, and, and you can put it in a unique item like that, it, it's going to help you sell your images. It's just extra ways, again, to make some money with your photos. It doesn't, like I said, it, it doesn't have to be the photography that maybe is a uh, your art photography, you know, if you're somebody who's a wildlife uh, photographer, my friend uh, Scott Schrader in, at St. Mary's used to shoot um, in Alaska, the wolves. That's, that was his passion. Um, but his wedding photography was the bread and butter. So coming up with packages like that, that you can just sell and you don't have to spend as much time on and having those make you some money while you get to do you know, the, the photography you're passionate about, that's just a big win-win there. Um, so finding places like uh, Finer Works, and if you come in, our customer service is super great. You'll find at this desk right here, 
Brandy and Angel, and they can get you, like I said, the paper packs. Um, you can see some of our products in there. Uh, the framed image that you see uh, on the easel behind me is uh, something that we have that I like, which is like a floated deckled edge print, which is like where it's torn by hand all the way around. Um, framed up, it's beautiful. Coming up and getting those ideas, um, if you want to come into Finer Works, uh, James and I are usually always there. <laughs> so um, we would also, you know, be glad to kind of help you with any kind of product idea that you can kind of package yeah. up and sell there for yourself. One of the things I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, when it comes to generating revenue from your prints, one of your, one of the most uh, useful things to yourself or one of the best things you can do for yourself is to gang up your products and offer them in packages. Um, make the buyer feel like they are getting a, not only a good deal, but they're really getting a, a robust uh, package. Um, so, you know, sell, sell your prints in, in triplet, you know, you know, in packs of three, you know, three unique prints at a time, you know, uh, you know, uh, off or offer a frame print and then offer a, you know, a smaller print, you know, unframed, uh, uh, something, you know, that, that, you know, may not cost you a whole lot of money, but does, uh, and you may not even make a whole lot on some of those items. Let's say if you offer a, you know, I don't know, a coffee mug, you know, we don't see too many coffee mugs with photos on it, but, uh, but, you know, you, just to, you know, I think you get the point. You're you're offering something that the buyer feels is a value, and then you can also mark up that more elegant print uh, a little bit more to help offset that. And so, those are like some of the techniques that we see a lot of photographers do uh, that have us print and fulfill for fi from finer works. Yeah, um, and again, with a lot of those unique products, again, like a. Uh, Finer Works right here has this thing where we're kind of much using the same printing process that you saw in that acrylic. We are doing things where you print directly onto gator board. Again, a great presentation method. This is great if you have a show coming up. Um, so this prints right onto the gator board and we have a sale going on 50% off um, through Sunday. If y'all wanna test it out, see how it is. Um, I think I have a picture on our finer works uh, Instagram that I can show you guys. Um, and th this is like one of the pages I was saying, if you follow. So here they are, the, the Gator Board prints is on the white and the black, but it's printed right on as opposed to being um, kind of applied with an adhesive. Like there, there's a, we also offer where we print a like on a paper, let's say somebody wanted something more textured, like Torshan paper, and they could do uh, that print adhered to the gator board. And that's one way to do that. And it can kind of get like a, over the years, maybe peeling, but this is printing directly onto the material again with that gator board. So if you want to try something like that, we do have that 50% discount going on right now. Um, and again, following in our Instagram, you can kind of see what some photographers and artists do. Like I said, we have a, an, again, this artist orders her stuff framed uh, from us and, uh, and upsells not only for her print, but upsells for that frame. So she's making money on both sides. That's, that's a brilliant way to just, you know, utilize what Finer Works has there to make extra money on your images. Um, acrylic prints, again, we we're talking about. There's some of the mugs um, people have used. Really personalizing those um, on there. Those are just great ways to do a lot of um, ideas to kind of come up with a creative package. So uh, follow us on Finer Works come and, and come by. You know, like I said, we'd be glad to talk to you guys about... Um, getting your stuff printed on some really unique items. Did anybody have questions? Is there anything here tonight that y'all had questions on? How well do mugs sell? Yeah, I'm looking into doing more art shows and I'm kind of oh. trying to figure out, 
You have one coming up, right, Margaret, if I remember? Well, I, I did. I just ended one, but yeah. one is in a, in a corporate, it's a co-op, mm -hmm. and they have a different specification, so I'm not going to do mugs and puzzles. Yeah. But we're doing prints. Yes. But they have to have, you know, frame. They have to be wood. They can't be plastic. They have to be archival. Mm -hmm. Which makes me wonder because I noticed walk around nurse. Hey, wait a second. This doesn't look archival. I don't. I don't know how well the judges look. But for me, I, for another art show, I'm trying to say, are mugs really that saleable, or are people going to be like, I don't care. Hey. I, when it comes to art shows and having them around, like I said, like if it's a package thing that you're making up, they can, depending on how you make the package, the mug by themselves. I always think of uh, mugs and um, coasters, things like that. I, I call them like promo items that I don't have to pay for and they right. make a buck or two on. Because one, to get a price point for them to work for, you kind of have to go with those bulk optioning. So you almost have to store that as inventory with you and take it with you selling to different places. And it takes a little longer to make the money back. But okay. um, the great thing about it, and that's why I think, you know, because you're on Geo Galleries, um, I'll tell people with the mugs, um, I always suggest to people get the 15 ounce mugs. Why? Because people tend to keep the larger mugs as their favorite mugs. I have a 32 ounce mug that has like a Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie show when I used okay. to work at Fox. I didn't like the show. I, it, I love the mug size. It's perfect for my tea. I don't have to keep going up to brew it more tea. What that, like I said, in television marketing, we would come up with ridiculous size mugs like that, that you're able to use almost for soups and, and large beverages, because people tend to keep them in front of them longer, you know. Um, really? And you would say sell it with a package, do you like what candy in it or? Like, well, you could do that, but I'm like with photography and stuff like that, you might do it as a, a package where you get like, um, say you want to do like your print and a framed print and maybe um, an unframed smaller print and a mug that you have out there, you oh. know, like a package. And you can also, like I said, you sell it up or you can even do something like where you sell your your framing, right? Let's say you want to take that 227 and say, you know, I have a $600 package for a 16 by 20 print that's already framed in, and you go, let them know that the glazing on there is reflective control and it has UV protection on it. Well, that's the big thing is why I like to to uh, have some of your stuff have local mm -hmm. because I got a prize from a uh, mugs mm -hmm. and I got it and just by scratching it, it comes off and I said, I'm not going to sell this. This is a loss. Right. Yeah. Here. This is a loss of my prize. I, that's why I would like to come to check out the thing now some of it i can't do okay puzzles i'm having to you know do lots of bulk things that look professional mm -hmm. um but i need to know what they look like and you know how well mugs do and yeah. and, you know, and what's the good selling price you know what and that's mug, i like i said um yeah. it's gonna be on what you want to store <laughs> you know, that's what I tell people. How much do you want to be able to store and have yeah. to? Do? Yeah, Margaret, the mugs do sell well um, <sighs> just from the artists that we talk to at uh, various art shows. And uh, but usually, like like Melissa said, they sell them as prom items. Just you know, almost to you know maybe make a, a, a dollar or two, but you know the the cost to to produce a single mug or, you know, just a handful of mugs uh, really doesn't give you a whole lot of room for, for profit. Because if, if you try to sell a, a mug like this that, that you see on the screen here at an art show and, uh, and, and you sell it for $20 and you offer it for $20, you may have trouble turning that over. Right. Um, people are willing to spend maybe at most 10 Fifteen dollars, if you're lucky. So, so I mean, if you can earn five dollars off a mug, that's great. But yeah, I'm, I some of the stuff, you know, I I can't yeah. mark up that much. Yeah, you know, exactly. yeah. and so 
so you make them available, like like most said, uh, more as a promo item, as, as something to kind of, okay. you know, remind people that, you know, of your work, you know, yeah. create and collectors like of your work. Having, yeah, the, having the price rolled into something like, you know, like a framed print. Like I said, that one that we looked at was like two twenty seven. Let's say your print is thirty bucks or something, um, and you make it a six hundred dollar package where you say you get a frame 16 by 20, a 11 by 14 unframed print, and you get a free mug for getting that, you know, your price of the mug is kind of wrapped in that 600 and something. Um, yes. But you're giving these out as promo items almost there too. And that's like, like I said, you've packaged the price all together to cover your expense for the mug printing, the frame, the framing and the prints that you had done. Um, right. And something like that would get, and you'd be, you know, it's kind of funny, something like that. I mean, you see, I've seen people buy expensive stuff for stickers. I'm yeah, like, and it's, it's frustrating with what I do, print yeah. for spec, because one show you ask like, oh, the calendars are selling well, but magnets don't sell well. And yeah, it's yeah like, and it's going to change area to area. That's uh, the problem is I don't have a lot of money to waste. Yeah. Exactly, um, I know. So um, I'm trying to find a sm small, a big prints at shows don't sell well for, mm -hmm. you know, in person, but I'm finding, okay, maybe at a gallery mm -hmm. or something. Um, you can also, um, I'm thinking also go ahead and um, what I have done at, at shows, like I said, when I run out of prints, I pre-sell them. I sell them right there online. I tell them, look, I don't have the print here, but if you'll go ahead and order right now, I'll have it directly sent to your home. Well, that's that's one thing I'm planning. I got a laptop specifically to bring to the show and say, let's go to my website. Let's go to Geo Galleries and I will order something. Here, what do you want? And I'm planning on that because that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying that's all I have. No, it's exactly. doable. And once in a while, I'll have people say, okay, it's, you know, what can you do with this print? Mm -hmm. So um, I have two more questions unless somebody else has questions. Sure, go ahead, Mark. Uh, do people really care about certificates from unknown artists? I mean, I'm not a famous artist. Are people going to really care if I put a certificate? It, I, I always, it's a good option to offer you don't have to put it on. You can tell them, though, you can provide a certificate. Okay. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, at uh, at the Austin Art Gallery I worked at. And again, these are some of them are unknown artists are breaking through there at our gallery. And we're selling their stuff, you know, kind of high when you're selling a $7,000 painting. And they say, I want a certificate of authenticity. Um the gallery would sometimes make one there, but I mean, it, it's, if you can, uh -huh. you can have it to offer, it's great. You don't have to make them. I would, I would go ahead and do them um, when you do a special run. Um, if you want to do something like that and offer it, yeah. and if you think it's something that's going to sell it, say you're doing it at a gallery, you might want to say, okay, I have a limited edition of 25. Each comes with a certificate of authenticity. Yeah, the nice thing is that this gallery, you get juried in once during the year, and then with the shows, you just can put any, almost anything in, which is a shock. They don't well, have to jury. Exactly. Yeah, they, so I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. One of the reasons why we added the certificates of authenticity yeah. uh, is because uh, artists were telling us, what do you have that can help me enhance the value of my prints? Yeah. And uh, they were looking at ways to enhance picture frames or, or yeah. framing the work enhances the value. A certificate of authenticity, believe it or not, enhances the value considerably in the yeah. eyes of the prospective buyer. Respect. Yeah. Um, my third question is the 3D prints you're doing, right? With the relief. Um, how yeah. much are those? The textured printing here. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking I have something I just made for the photo contest that I would like in relief print. And I'm trying to see, I want to get it into the May show. And I'm wondering how expensive it is. Now, these are on um, offered on our dye bond metal prints. They're not offered on paper or anything? 
No, because it, you're gonna, it needs the the surface also to, to kind of layer the inks on yeah. um, and give you this raised surface. And they have to be prepared a special way uh -huh. um, in Photoshop to get your layers on there. And we do have that on our Finer Works uh, YouTube. Um, I think James covered on yeah. there about putting the um, file together. Yeah. But had and, some with great images. Yeah, it, it's another uh, enhancing tool. Um, because if you offer a print that has actual texture, whether it be a photograph or a reproduction of a painting, you know, it, it gives it e even more dimension, gives it more well, substance. Yeah. It looks like an oil it. painting. I'm, I'm learning Photoshop and this one looks like an oil painting. I said, I think to win the contest, if I make that raised texture, I might be able to win the contest, but I'm not sure how much it's going to cost. Here's our pricing yeah. on it. Now, okay. uh, James, uh, with um, textured on the pricing here. Uh, yeah, the, the best way to get the pricing on that it would be to set up the print online on our site, and it'll give you the pricing there. Um, okay. It's kind of yeah, hard to... Building it, because you don't have to buy it. You can just, yeah. you're going to build it in there. Yeah, and... there, there's three different textured levels. You know, there's yeah. just a very minimal texture, which you can... You can see, but it's not going to be very, very, very yeah. obvious unless you're up close. The medium and the heavy texture are the most popular. Now they take a long time for us to print um, to print those. So uh, I, I don't know what the, the cost is, but I do know that uh, you know the, the heavier texture you go, the more expensive it's going to be. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of, yeah, bigger, something reasonably, but it can't yeah. be too big because they have space issues. So yeah. all your we, work we, has to be we, within certain sizes. We have one photographer. Uh, I can't remember if he's local or relatively local. I think he's in Texas. He comes and picks up the prints, uh, but occasionally he'll do a like a 40 by 60 uh, with a heavy texture. And yeah. And uh, they look phenomenal. Um, and he, he sells them for, you know, at least, you know, four or five grand. Yeah. <laughs> and and well, the that's... print may have cost him, you know, you know. Well, if he can do that, he must make, be well known. It, if it's, he it's can do that, he's yeah. got to be well known, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't believe so. Of, yeah, he's, he, I don't just, know him outside of being a client. Yeah. Like I said, you 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 yeah. sell it on there. I mean, if you watch Jim's other sh uh, shows, like um, if you get on on our our uh, photo tips monthly and stuff on there, uh, Jim has really good um, ways of saying, you know, you're you want to curate the people who are going to buy at that level. That's that's the hard part. Is it's the hard part? It's, but it's hard to figure it out where I'm doing it. It's for portrait, it may be easier, but with what I'm doing is it, it's it's, it's a, a hit and miss. Yeah, it is a hit and miss. But uh, and like I, I said, talk with uh, yeah. Jim on, on some techniques to build that list. Well, I've also I you know I have trouble just getting people to sign up. I had a contest on my website and no one entered to win a print. Yeah, but so you it's frustrating. Gotta, you got to keep a lot of channels. I think I had asked you what was your Instagram and what was your. Yeah, I you gotta. Know, you gotta if you, right. you know if you announce to an empty room, yeah. that's how many people you can expect to enter. Yeah. You know, so you got to find little ways to do it. Social media helps. Uh, I'm, I guess that it it's hard work too there now, but I mean, at, at least mm -hmm. it helps people help you. There's friends. There's family. There's people who are already admirers of your work that want to tell other people about you and mm -hmm. having having that available does help it helps them share it okay any yeah. other questions you, you have any questions no and uh jim i i don't know if jim's made it in yet i know he's got a couple of things for photo essay See. Jim is here. He's okay. heading over to this desk. So. I'm going to stop share on my stuff and I will give you guys back control there. Okay. Oh, he's back home, so he should be okay there. So.
So I'm going to put him back as host, make host. All right. So I have Jim there now as host. But I don't know if y'all wanted to go ahead. And if anybody uh, has any questions, like I said, um, you can also send them to uh, Melissa at finalworks.com if it's something in regards to works or on my Instagram. Um, I'm an insomniac, so I'm always answering questions at weird hours. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to answer them if I can. Well, you rock, Melissa. <laughs> I appreciate you and James and all the things you guys do to help us photographers out because we could use all the help we can get. <laughs> I, I like uh, Kevin's background with that, those cats on the, on the bookshelf. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I the worked hard. To get my attention. I <laughs> worked hard to make that. <laughs> With a piece of stole, stolen art. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, um, how about uh, Robin? Do you want to share who the uh, the winners are for the for this month's photographers challenge? Sure thing. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, it says I'm not host. Oh, let me see. It shows me, it shows you as host on my <laughs> I gave Melissa host because you were absent. Oh, you know what? There's two Jim Landers on here. Hold on. Why? Why? Well, and one's I made, the incredible why? Jim Landers and one's the regular Jim Landers. I made so. regular Jim yeah. Landers host. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> and now I can't grab it from him. <laughs> <laughs> Neither can I, but, you know, I've tried. It's on my cell phone. Maybe I can share a host with my cell phone. Yes, you can. If you're on your cell phone, if that other one is a cell phone one, you should be able to switch yourself over. I don't see the option. I agree. Wonder. How did you get on twice? <laughs> there you go. So we see your phone. That's not what I intended to do. I, I think I just gave myself, <laughs> I think oh. I just gave myself host. host. Yes, you are. So therefore I should be able to. Share your screen now. I can't play with you right now. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, Robin, I just opened up shared for you. And you're muted, by the way. Hello. There we go. Okay. So when you say share screen, I can do this. That's not what I want. You, you want to click that little green square at the bottom of your Zoom window. And then a window opens up and you, should, and you yep. click on the, on the one you want us to see. Okay. So I'm going to start with a video. I don't have... You um, can't see it yet. Okay. I'm just giving you the presence of... Here's the first one. Yay. And this is uh, Barry Spiegel. He's a runner up. Is Barry here?
Jim. But oh, I, I, I can know. see nothing but my screen, so I don't know if Barry is here. I do not see him on here. Yeah, okay. I don't see his name on here. Okay, then I'm going to move to so, the next one. But they they're out. All the ones you're looking at right now are outstanding. So there's there's five outstanding and one overall. Right. Um, there wasn't a, a, a chosen overall unless so you then, want to give it so then in the let end. them let them choose the overall then okay that sounds great so, so robin robin's going to show you all six images that were chosen and you guys get to choose your favorite uh in chat so what this an is, awesome idea so just uh, make sure that you guys know who's and you'll just put the first name of the person in chat and we'll the one with the most i, I think you can create a poll in zoom Oh yeah, you can create a poll. Are we allowed to vote for our Yes. <laughs> hmm. Barry, right? Okay. I clicked on create your own poll, but it says invalid meeting ID. So I guess I can't do it during. Hmm. Well, we'll do the chat. Okay. We'll go to the chat. All right. So this one is, uh, say the name again. Barry. Barry. Okay. So it's the next one. Is there a different way to do this or is this the way it's going to be? Just curious. I don't understand the question. I thought I had it organized, but. I think you just anyway. have to click the next button. Yes. I'm going to hit that. This is Elizabeth Ramirez. And again, the theme is water. So should I move on? Mm -hmm. Yes. Horst, I don't know how to say his last name. Should I move on? Robin, what was that name? I'm sorry. This one, Horst, H-O-R-S-T, Schoeninger. Schoeninger. Thank, Thank you. you, Jim. And this is John Kane. It has a geo galleries too. <laughs> hmm. Can I move on? You're in control. You do. You do okay. it the way well, you want I, to do it. I didn't know. Um, I when I was in your room before, I didn't know who was on and who was not. So I didn't know if I should ask questions. Mm -mm. What they thought about this image? Okay, no. thank you, Kaylin Stewart. That one's fun. And this says Tina Joop or? Joopy. Joopy, okay. And again, all of this is water was the theme. So where to go from here, Jim? So go over them one more time. Make sure and just, okay. just uh, I'm gonna show go the backwards. image and say the okay. names. Okay. So this was Tina Juppé. 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 <laughs> Kaylin Stewart. John Kane. Horst. And you have to say his name, Jim. Just say the first name because that's all they need Horst. for for the uh, purposes of uh, putting it in chat. Okay, I think I did that. Thank you. Elizabeth Ramirez. Barry Spiegel. All right, so you guys pick your favorite. And do we put this to you, Jim, or just everyone in the chat, or? Uh, just put it all, yeah, just to everyone. Okay. And then Robin, or anyone, really, count them up, see who went, see who's the winner. 
And it's, did you, Robin, did you finalize winners, what the winners get? I did not. Um, I did talk to um, <sighs> hold Amanda? on a second. I'm, I'm yes, and I'm also looking at what I'm reading right now. Uh, she didn't finalize, but I think she would love to just do the eight by twelve. So okay. I just have to send each winner. The code that she brings mm -hmm. and what does the overall win the one that we're voting on right now are you asking me because i've never done this before so that's uh digital <laughs> pro lab um donates a, a 16 by 20 uh, oh okay that's for the uh for the overall winner um Good. So has anybody counted yet? Who's the winner? Are we voting for a grand prize and a secondary or just a grand prize? Just the grand prize. These are all okay. these are the our winners. Just one of these is the overall. So it looks like there's One, two, three, four for Elizabeth, one, two, three for Horst, and one for John. Is that correct? Uh, five on for Elizabeth. Yeah, I see five for Elizabeth. So does that mean Elizabeth is the winner? Yep. Yep. Can you show us that, Robin? Next one. So is this the winner? Is this Elizabeth? This is Elizabeth. Yes. Okay. Then, then she's the winner of, of this month's um, competition. Thank you guys for voting. All right. So Robin, just write, just write that down. And, and uh, I, I think if, I know how to do that. Thank you. Okay. But there's one more thing you may not. And so let me tell you, um, give her name and uh, email address to uh, Melissa, and she can take care of that for you. And do you want to stop sharing your screen? Thank you. Cool. All right. And so, um, Melissa, I have something for you. And let's see if I have it handy. Yes, I sure do. And so um, for being the, the speaker this month, I'm going to be in just a moment sending you something through chat. And this is it. And I want you to, to print it and put it on your wall. This says, in appreciation of your gracious gift of time, attention, kindness, and thoughtfulness, Thank you from the grateful members of Photo SA. The certificate is presented to Melissa Hernandez on uh, today, March 10th, 2022. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for having me on. Hey, Melissa, let's print that uh, as, as one of these. How's that sound? Oh, yeah. Let's totally cool. do that. Yeah. I want one for my, my office table. I think it's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any pictures hanging in your office. Yeah. I know. I, I need some pictures here. Great. Okay. Great. Yes. Um, Send that to me, Jim, and I will print it out. Perfect. I'll have that to you in 10 seconds. That's the good thing about sending images to printers. We get excited about printing up. <laughs> All right. So that should be in, I sent it directly to you. So that should be in your chat right now have that and I am saving it now. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.
Let's see. <laughs> um, by the way, I'm just looking at the chat. Jim, do you need any more cameras behind yeah. you? <laughs> do you match. like those? Robin made Is that it for virtual? me. I thought that was real. Is that real? It's, it's real. real. Yeah. Yeah. He had all that in his office. Yeah. Yeah. Can we donate a few more cameras? <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is my Valentine's gift from Robin. Um, she was um, wanting something uh, other than my brick um, background that was there. And the sign that said Lander Photography School, she painted that. Um, and uh, she, she wanted to have something different. And so she found, she went looking online and found this, these shelves and uh, ordered them. And uh, they, they came in just, you know, pieces. You had to put them together. So Ricky put them together. And then she put the, there's a white backing that she added to it. And then I installed it onto the wall and she put all, uh, she, she decorated it. She put all of the, uh, all the different cameras and, and such up there. Even this old thing. I made this That's camera. Neat. I in, still in college. <laughs> I still have Robin's photo magnets she made. Oh, good. Yeah, they're on. They broke a couple of them. Broke, Ooh. but I patched them together. They're yeah. special. <laughs> they're special. So thank you, Robin. She turned down a finer work, finer works gift card for that. So <laughs> <laughs> well, it was special, you know. Okay, so uh, what else do we need to be talking about? The photo meeting coming up, not this oh. Sunday, but the following Thank you. Sunday. That's yes. right. So um, what Hugo is talking about is the annual San Antonio Photography Tournament planning committee meeting. So these are these are the volunteers and we could use a few more. So uh, this is an invitation uh, to, to show up to that. But that's on March uh, 20th, Sunday, March 20th at 4 p.m. And I... Uh, uh, if you would like to, if you're curious about becoming a, a volunteer for the annual San Antonio Photography Tournament, uh, let me know in the in the chat, and uh, we'll add you to the list so you know how to get to that meeting. The other thing is, um, if anybody's interested in joining the new Braunfels Art League co-op, that's a really good co-op. You have to volunteer eight hours or less a month of your time, and you pay a little bit to get in or juried in. And if they take it, and then it's a pretty good deal because then you could keep hanging up stuff. If you sell something, you hang up something new. And some of the shows you apply to for that year, uh, they don't jury anymore. Um, they have basic rules and you can pick three pieces to go in a show and they don't jury it in, but you do have to pay a little bit. So it's pretty reasonable. She okay. sold one already. Yeah, I sold one. I'm hoping the other one's Good job. Yeah. But it's a good deal because I have talked to a co-op in Skinny Atlas, New York, when I was there, and they wanted 10 to 20 hours a week of free labor. And I said, I don't have that time. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes co-ops maybe, but this one is pretty good. So. And the, what's the name of it one more time? Shannon, it? New Braunfels. New Braunfels. Are New Braunfels. Okay. Yeah, co-op. Very good. Does anybody have anyone else have something that they'd wanted to share that they've they've learned that might be beneficial to other members? Jim, I'm not sharing. I wanted to uh, two or three people talked at the same time. It was New Braunfels what? Art League. Art League. Thank you. It's on San Antonio Street, and I can't remember, but it's it's in downtown New Braunfels. Yeah. And it's, I think it's a pretty good thing because I'm, I'm just cleaning five hours a month. And uh, for the amount I have to pay to get juried in and to hang, do certain things as a member, it's not that much. It doesn't require that much of your time and that much of your money. And if you try to rent from some of these galleries, you're paying out of your nose each month or for the square footage or, and I couldn't afford that. I yeah. can't afford 200, $300 a month just to have my art sit in a gallery, hoping someone will buy it. So. Okay.
No, you're looking. I think Hugo's got a picture. You're looking for a picture, hon? Well, they had an ad in the oh, I was going to look. I'll find the ad. Yes, yeah, it's, it's in downtown New Braunfels, uh, uh, right next uh, in that, you know, right along the main street with all the shops, and it's near the railroad tracks across from the railroad museum and the Brontex Theater. Yeah. And. Uh, Oh, really nice. And you could kind of sign up for different positions you want to volunteer with. I know they're looking for social media people, website designers <laughs> help. They said, well, our, a lot of our staff is geriatric and they don't uh, know That's not what they do. Yeah, oh, they don't. Uh, yeah, they don't know. And they asked me because I put it down. I said, I don't know how to be a web. What did they want, honey? They're looking for a web, web administrator. I said, I'll help, but uh, I'm cleaning right now. So they're also very happy. <laughs> I'm cleaning. Because I mean, I don't think you need to know HTML or anything. I think it's just like the. Well, they want a webmaster. Just, uh, just update it and stuff. I don't... But they, the problem is they've got several different people who do different things and then they can't remember what they did and they can't, <laughs> we'll give them the password. I thought this is stupid. <laughs> All right. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, so anybody else have anything they wanted to, to share that, that they, uh, uh, that they have experienced or learned and, and want other members to know? No, I don't see anybody saying anything. And the, uh, as you know, the, all of our meetings are on the, the, the second Thursday of each month. And so, uh, hopefully you have that on your calendar already and, and you know, to, to be here at six 30, uh, if not, Hey, it's a good time right now, go to your calendar and, and put that in, make sure you put it on repeat because it is the second Thursday of every single month. And it has been for this is our 16th year. We've completed we've completed 15 years of uh, Photo SA. Uh, had we've had over 300 speakers and a whole bunch of different events over the years. We could uh, use some extra help on the volunteer side uh, to help uh, organize with things. Um, we are we're grateful for the volu all the all the volunteers that do help, uh, uh, including those who help uh, with the. Um, sharing the photographs, the photographer's challenge that Robin shared just a little while ago. Uh, Wendy makes sure that that folder is ready every single month um, by opening up a new folder and, and adding in uh, an initial image. And then so you have a place to put your photographs and then Robin for making uh, that happen. So the two of them working together make that part go pretty smoothly. Um, Robin, have you already announced what next month's category or topic is? And if not, would you like to do that now? I have not, um, but I can give like two different options. I talked to Wendy earlier and she said it was open for discussion. So if you guys want to choose one, um, we've got Boca. Does anyone know what that means? Jim, you'll have to describe that. Was that from the photo tournament back in October, Boca? Yeah. Well, th this is from a new list for this year. So do, let's just choose that one because that's that's a good one. Okay, let's yeah, do Boca. So, so Boca, um, and let's make let's get, make sure everybody does understand it. You, you asked a good question, Robin. Um, so Boca is a slang term. It's only been used for maybe the last twenty years. Uh, it wasn't. It, it hasn't always been called that. It was called circles of confusion before, and it's still called circles of confusion. That's the correct word um, or correct, correct uh, description of it, but no one calls it that. I haven't heard anyone call it that in 20 years. Uh, so um, it's, it, it's something Boca. that is so far out of focus that it shows up as the shape of the light 
that it's that's coming through. So therefore, the shape of your lens is a circle. So therefore, it's so far out of focus that it shows up as a circle. Yeah. However, if you put something in front of your lens and let's say that the shape of the light was a triangle, then then the bokeh would not be a circle. It would be a triangle because it takes on the shape of the light that's coming into your camera. And so it's I got think, to be real far out of focus in order to make that happen. I think the term comes from the Japanese. It is. It's a Japanese word. <laughs> yeah, Kevin's right. Bokeh is, is Japanese. And we probably say it incorrectly um, because they, they say a, a word that's very close to a, holding a handful of flowers. Bokeh. It's very similar to that. Um, the we we kind of when we say bokeh, we we put the the um, emphasis on the bow. They would put it on the case. So it would be bokeh, um, is how they would say it. So we we say it wrong according to them, but it doesn't matter. Bokeh or bokeh, same exact thing. We also say Nikon wrong. So there you go. Yep, it's Nikon. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> uh, thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. so um so how do you get that well mostly in one way there, there, it's it's a combination of three different things um but it, it, most people know it uh, those who understand it or think think of it in terms of just a low numbered f stop so a low number so your your f stops will have a range you've got a range of f stops available and it's in your camera, although for most, or excuse me, it's in your lens, although for most of us, we control it in our camera. Um, but it is a function of the lens and it's just the iris. It's, it's a series of blades that overlap each other. And I can't do it in a circle because, well, my fingers aren't in a circle, but they overlap in order to form that circle. And it gets bigger or it's smaller. The bigger, the lower the number. The smaller, the higher the number. So we want to choose on purpose a low number, but that's not the only variable. There's also distance because if you're close, like I'm not far away from this background at all. I'm close enough to it where it doesn't really matter what f-stop you choose unless you have a really low numbered f-stop. I mean, like a, a 1.2, uh, it, it, this is still going to be, uh, it's still going to have enough uh, focus that you, you can't tell. And, and you're going to see the, the bokeh in, in the points where there is very specific points of light. Uh, and so uh, the Christmas lights is a, a great example because you have those very specific singular points of light. And that's where you'll get the best uh, uh, circles of confusion or bokeh. And, and so we want to choose something that a subject that's relatively close and the background's relatively far and you are focused on the subject and not the background, you're focused on the subject, you've chosen a small f-stop number, which means, and let's say the subject is here and your background is over here and you're over here. So cam camera, subject, background. So if that is the setup and you're choosing a small f-stop number, then that subject being right here, the, the depth of focus gets small. The larger the f-stop number, the larger the depth of focus. So if you want both subject that's close and background that's far in focus, you're, you're, you're purposely choosing a large numbered f-stop. For instance, if you're photographing, let's say um, you're here in San Antonio, Texas, and family comes in from out of town and you wanna take them to the Alamo, you don't wanna choose a small numbered f-stop. When you have them standing way out in front of the Alamo, you've got that strip of grass and you're standing out on the road, you don't want the background in this instance to go out of focus. Same thing if if it's your, if you're at the Grand Canyon. Do you want the the Grand Canyon to be out of focus if you're photographing your family in front of it? Of course not. So you don't choose a small number f stop in those instances because it makes the background go out of focus. By the way, you can do the reverse. You can make the background sharp with a small f stop number and make the foreground out of focus. Those can be cool too. By the way, I said there were three variables, f-stop, distance, and the third is focal length. So the larger the number of the focal length, the more you're going to uh, ex expand this, the, the potential for bokeh, a, a small depth of focus up front and a very out of focus background. The lower that number on the f-stop though, that's where you're gonna see your biggest change.
That's where you want to be paying attention to the most. Those other two are important, especially distance. The last of, as far as importance, is focal length, the zoom. So 100, 200, 300, these higher number focal lengths. Any questions on how to create an image that's got fantastic bokeh? Silence. Even the dog got silent. <laughs> it's good, Jim. That's <laughs> really good. <laughs> wow. You, you don't render gray speechless very often. So <laughs> uh, all right. So that is, um, that's our topic. Boca is our topic for, for our next photographer's challenge, which is due the Friday before the next meeting. So let me look at my calendar and give you the exact date. The exact date will be April 8th. April 8th. That is the due date for the next photographer's challenge. Uh, and we'll, um, Robin's going to send the, uh, that choice of Boca to Wendy and Wendy will make that folder. Give her a few, a few days to do that. So she's, she's doing stuff. So probably won't, that folder probably won't open up till next week. Uh, but the way you do that, in case you don't know you, once that folder is available, you will go, to, you log in to uh, meetup.com forward slash photo essay. M E E T U P meetup.com forward slash photo essay, P-H-O-T-O-S-A, and then log in and then click on photos and then click on this month's folder. And then you drop, drag and drop up to five of your images into it. Simple as that. Any questions on how to, to uh, participate? Good. Then I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Holsey's photographs and Michelle's photographs. And uh, let's see, I want to see Jero's photographs and David, Fred, uh, Brady. I want to see your photographs. I bet you have, I bet all of you have some fantastic images. By the way, I didn't mention some of you because you participated this month. Um, but uh, I, I still do expect to see you guys um, participating again. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing those fantastic images. Uh, where you're showing off your Boca skills. All right, so that's for next time. Uh, there's probably some other things we need to mention, but I can't remember them right now. Tournament. We did. Uh, Robin said tournament. We did mention that. Maybe I should mention it one more time. Maybe that's what she's telling me to do. Uh, so the, the next volunteer meeting is March 20th, Sunday, March 20th at 4 p.m. If, if I could add a couple more comments on Boca, uh, yeah. for, those that are, for those that are new to it, if you start playing around with it, really, I would list two more variables. Uh, one is you'll find some of your lenses do better than others. So if you have more, more lens choice, I know not everybody does, but, uh, but some lenses are just brilliant at it and others, uh, no matter what you do, it's a struggle. And the other thing is you're, you're blurring the background, but uh, choose, choose the colors, choose, the, choose what's in that background to blur because you can have a lot of impact with uh, you know, making sure the colors don't clash or making sure you get a nice, uh, you know, nice blend. So. Anyway, yeah, a couple of thoughts. I like that. I like that. Yeah, think about your background. Even though it's going to be out of focus, that's smart. Good, good, good thoughts. I appreciate that, Kevin. Yeah, your background does count. That's right. That is right. Oh, yeah, good, Fred. Um, Fred put in chat a little bit more about uh, what happens at the, uh, or what we're needing at the, at the planning committee meeting that's coming up. By the way, there's two tournaments we do per each year. We do the regular tournament in October of every year, and this is the 10th annual. Uh, so a big, big one this year, uh, 10th annual. And the uh, kids version that we do, kids is five to 15. The regular version is 12 and up. So we can't call it adult because 12 year olds aren't, aren't, but 12 and up is for the regular tournament in October. And the, uh, and that's the 17th and uh, the uh, tournament in July for the kids is uh, the 16th of July. 
Hopefully I got that right. Did I just mix up the dates? I better look. July 17th. So I, I did I reverse that? So, so July 17th and October 16th. Those are the two dates. The, the July 17th is the kids. And we definitely need volunteers for the kids. And then the, um, the regular tournament is October 16th. So put that on your calendar so you don't forget about those. The tickets haven't gone on sale for those yet. Uh, they, they will be shortly. Robin and Kevin are going to be doing some site visits to narrow down where we're going to have that. All right. I think that's everything. If you guys, uh, if you guys have any, yeah. Oh, uh, Tina just asked a question. If you volunteer, you're able to participate. It depends on what it is you're volunteering for. Uh, for instance, uh, judges obviously can't participate. Uh, even the the person who is responsible for helping out the judges, the the um, uh, the it's. It's a judge's hospitality position. It's meaning it's in the, uh, the hospitality chairs. Um, it's one of their responsibilities. Uh, the hospitality chair this year is Robin, uh, Robin Landers, my Robin. Uh, and uh, so under her is the hospitality for the judges. Even that person can't participate. Uh, so there are certain position, positions where you, you're not able to participate, but the majority of the volunteer positions, you can participate. <laughs> Yep. Thank you, Jim. I do have one other question. Um, mm -hmm. I know last year I was out of town and was able to participate, but it sounds like y'all are going to do a centralized <coughs> location this year. Yeah, I believe we're going to be doing an in-person location. All right. Bummer. That, we usually travel during that time, but hopefully we won't be. But that's, that's, that's during our, it is right by our anniversary, so we're normally out of town. Ah. We'll see what happens. Um, we're looking forward to maybe that um but tina if you want to host or do anything hospitality wise then just reach out to me anytime you got my email and you know there's the dog whatever okay our babies are awesome <laughs> yeah in fact we just learned speaking of judges we learned our judge person that oversees the judges in october wants to participate this year so uh so now we need somebody who can um uh, oversee the judges so they can't um, participate yeah and but look at all the work i do with her so recruit a loving spouse or friend <laughs> that's right to uh to help and are you volunteering it, it, it makes a great way to stay connected and do something fun together call it a date day like i do <laughs> so I love it that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome all right i think that's it guys Thank you so much for being here at a, another photo essay meeting. Put, put the next one on your, on your calendar. We'll send a, an email out ahead of time. Thank you for, for investing your time and sharing your time with us today and share this with others. Um, there are about 1,800 members of Photo Essay Camera Club, uh, but the majority of them are what I call joiners. They, they joined and that was the most amount of effort they put into it. Uh, so we need people who aren't joiners who are actually going to show up at different things we do. By the way, the more people we have, the easier it is for us to put different events together because there's more volunteers to help make it happen. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your interest in volunteering. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday, a wonderful weekend. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, guys. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, Jen. That's coming thank you up. Guys. And thank Thanks you, Melissa, Melissa, one more thank time. You. Thanks, Thanks James.